What's up everyone? My name is Cody Engel. I am a staff software engineer and in today's video I want to talk to you about creating a five-year plan or actually how to succeed without a five-year plan because uh, for me in my career I've never really had a five-year plan and I found I've been able to be perfectly fine without it. What I tend to do is live life, come into work with a couple guiding principles that help me understand and evaluate situations as they come up to figure out, hey, is this gonna keep me on the right path or is this gonna lead me down the wrong path? And so instead of coming in with a five-year plan where you know, two years later, probably no longer as valid as it was two years prior, this allows me to continuously adapt and kind of show up for new situations. So with that, let's get into it. Let's talk about uh, my guiding principles of how to be a successful software engineer. All right, so my first guiding principle of just being successful in your career as a software engineer is to work hard. So, you know, work smart as well, but the, the goal is to work hard. Do what you need to do to get the job done. And so in the software in industry, it is so important just to ship software. Um, at the end of the day, the, the people who are using your software, your manager, your product manager, stakeholders, all of that, they don't care how great the code is from like the inside. They, they really just care that it works. And so uh, what I mean by this is, in terms of like working hard is just do everything that you need to do to get the work done in a way that you will be reasonably happy with that work six months down the road. And reasonably happy is kind of an important one there because if you're doing your job correctly as a software engineer, uh, you will never be completely satisfied with the code that you wrote six months ago because you're continuously learning, continuously learning how to do new things a bit better, a bit more elegantly. And so that, that's why I wanna kind of emphasize on the work hard, also work smart where you can, but don't focus on over-engineering the overall solution because as soon as you start over-engineering things, that's when you know deadlines slip, customers aren't getting what they want. If the customers aren't getting what they want, your manager isn't getting what they want because their goal is for you to ship software. Uh, your product manager isn't going to be super thrilled because again, their goal is to make the customer happy and if the customer doesn't have software which works, they're not gonna be too happy and so sometimes this will force you to work a little bit harder. You know, you will take some shortcuts here and there, but ultimately those shortcuts you'll learn from those mistakes um, and you'll be able to actually ship products to your customers, which is again, the main goal of a software en engineer. All right, and then, so the second guiding principle that I go into work every day trying to understand is uh, putting in extra time outside of work. And this doesn't mean that you're working, you know, 10, 20 hours extra um, every week. All this means is like expect that when you go into the software industry that you are going to have to learn a little bit outside of work. So this might mean, you know, taking an extra hour, two hours a week just to read up on the newest trends. Um, for myself personally, what I have found to be fairly successful and kind of my uh, trend from junior engineer up into staff engineer is I started off doing side projects. These side projects allowed me to expand on my knowledge, understand design patterns that I otherwise wouldn't be able to focus on as a you know more junior engineer because as a junior engineer, you're not making architectural decisions. If you're not making architectural decisions, it's hard to kind of get that experience in place. And then once I was starting to uh, continue on with my career, I found that those side projects started to taper off a bit and instead, what I was able to do, since I was a more senior engineer at that point, I was making those architectural decisions and projects. What I was then doing was sharing my knowledge through blog posts, through Medium articles. So um, I was writing a ton, getting a lot of feedback from people outside of my direct team. Uh, from that, it was helping me build up my reputation. So if you're writing articles and they're, they're decently good enough, <laughs> you'll find that your coworkers are going to have a bit more respect for you um, just because you know, you're putting yourself out there, you're helping build up your brand, but then you know, in those, your, your coworkers are kind of 
working with you, so they have that relationship, I guess. They, your coworkers are invested in you. There you go, that's what I was looking for. Your coworkers are invested in you as well. And so if you're publishing those articles, they're gonna be reading them, they're gonna be seeing them, uh, and they're gonna be building up more respect for you. Uh, and then what I found that worked out pretty well in terms of working outside of work was moving from articles into public speaking. And so I started speaking more at meetups around uh, my city, started speaking at some smaller conferences, getting to the point where uh, people were asking me if I would wanna just speak at their conference. Uh, and so that, that helped out quite a bit. And that was probably the point where I was putting in the most amount of, of work, like preparing for a talk will take usually between like 20 and 40 hours for me. And so if I'm planning that out a month in advance, that's going to be about 10 hours extra per week. But usually I start working on like two to one week out. So it's usually about uh, 20 to, to 40 hours of, of extra work uh, to put together a talk. And so with that, I started to not want to do those talks anymore. Um, it was still super valuable, but um, I wanted to do something that was um, a little bit different. And so this is sort of now here where I'm making YouTube videos. So putting in the extra time outside of work to make these, this is usually between, let's say, eight to 16 hours a week, um, depending on editing and social media and all of that fun stuff. But I found that this has been incredibly valuable as well because I'm able to share my self with uh, a larger community. These are sort of blurring the lines between posting stuff on Medium where people can Google search and all of that and then uh, doing talks where I'm up just talking about whatever. So, and what I found though is like over time, what I spent my time on was more instead of creating stuff for myself and um, creating like side projects and things like that, I was starting to deviate more towards helping others out, becoming more of a mentor, becoming someone that people come to when they have questions. And so um, that's sort of what I found worked out pretty well for me anyway for spending time outside of work. And so with that, we'll get on with the next one. And so the third guiding principle um, is in terms of what happens when you are inevitably looking for a new job. So what I've found that has worked out really well is I never leave a company if, uh, like, unless I'm getting paid more to leave the company. And this has allowed me to go from, I think the, my base salary when I first started out was around like 57,000 a year to now more than that. Um, I don't know how much I can actually talk about salary in public. I'm assuming it's not a big deal, but I'm not gonna, not really prepared to cross those waters yet. So, uh, but anyway, what I found has worked out well for this. And it was, it started off as just very greedy. Like I just, I wanna make more money. People are going to continuously pay me more money to leave my current company to go to another one. But um, while that is beneficial in its own right, what I've also noticed that is, ends up being a lot better actually is I don't have any sort of resentment. I don't have any sort of regret for leaving my, my previous job because inevitably I'm gonna join a new company. You're going to have you know, the rose colored glasses. Everything seems way better. And then six months in, you're gonna start kind of seeing some of the organizational problems. Every company has them. It's, it's just kind of a thing. And so if, but, it, but if you're going from you know, leaving a company that you were assuming reasonably happy with to another company, and now there's like these problems coming up, it's no longer the perfect company that you thought it was, um, you're gonna start thinking like, man, I took a pay cut to come to a company that has problems. Like, what is that? I thought I was taking a pay cut to work at a really super cool company that was gonna have no problems. And eventually it's gonna kind of cascade into just a bunch of regret, a bunch of resentment towards you know the company itself probably. And you're probably not going to stay with that company too long. So that is one thing that has helped me out um, quite a bit. Uh, this isn't like a hard and fast rule. Like we probably have a recession coming up um, if you know, I were laid off or anything like that and it was not a good job market, absolutely would take a pay cut. But when the job market is there, like you can get a job very easily. Um, that is sort of where this rule kind of comes into play and I found it, it's worked out pretty well and um, I've, every single company that I've uh, continued on with 
I've, you know, again, have experienced organizational problems, but I've never once been like, man, I would have been better off at my, at my old company. Like, it's one thing that has continued to keep me moving forward and really appreciating what I have. All right, and so the last one. Um, this is just uh, kind of gonna, gonna steal from Google, uh, the don't be evil motto. Um, just do the right thing, do what you think is right, and speak up for that. So what, how this comes into play that I found is you'll be sitting in a meeting, things just aren't going well, people are clearly upset, they're not enjoying what is going on with the project, uh, but no one wants to speak up because it's, it's what it is. And so being able to speak up uh, and, and do the right thing to say, hey, this is a problem, we need to do X, Y, and Z. You're now putting yourself out there, you're doing something that no one else wanted to do, but you're doing it for the greater good of your team or your company. And for that, in every situation that I've been in, you end up getting a lot more respect um, from your coworkers. You're gonna get a better reputation in general. Uh, and so, yeah, with that one, like it's not, there's not really much else to it. Um, what I found is just kind of having some clear moral standards of the way that I want to do work, the way that I want to show up, and then when I see something not living up to those, just bringing it up. And you don't have to be a jerk about it, but just bringing to attention and saying, hey, this is a problem and I want to work on it to fix it. All right, and so that is it for this video. This is the second one in this sort of a style where I have a general idea of what I want to talk about, but I'm not going in and writing like in-depth scripts. I'm just sort of speaking off, off the cuff. So um, the, the video I did before, which is uh, the different engineering career ladders, that one seemed to do pretty well. So I'm hoping that this one was also valuable. Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments below. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, click the notification bell. And most importantly, if you hated this video, please let me know why so I can make future videos just a little bit better. Um, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.